Now let's talk about the different kinds of cache misses and you'll see here that we are organizing cache misses into three different categories and these are referred to as the three C's. So compulsory, capacity and conflict misses. And the main reason we are doing this is because as a programmer I'm trying to understand what is causing my cache misses and once I understand what is causing these cache misses I can perhaps redesign my cache in a better way or restructure my application in a better way or I can buy a next generation processor that has a cache hierarchy that is likely to minimize the number of my cache misses, right? So that's what we are trying to do here. We are providing some guidelines to break down my cache misses into one of these three categories. So the first is referred to as the compulsory misses, which says that when I touch a block for the first time, there's no way that this data is already going to be sitting in my cache, right? So that's, that's a compulsory miss and there's no way to avoid that. Now, one way to avoid a compulsory miss is to have an aggressive prefetching mechanism, right? So when I'm touching a word for the first time, I bring an entire block, an entire 64 byte block into my cache, right? So there are several words over here that have not yet been touched, but are already sitting in the cache, right? So by bringing in a large block, I'm having a default prefetching policy that says that, you know, don't just bring in four bytes, bring in these neighboring bytes as well. And as a result of that, I'm avoiding compulsory misses on these other words that have not yet been touched. Okay, so prefetching can help avoid the number of compulsory misses. Now, if I design an infinitely sized cache, an infinitely sized hypothetical cache, then any misses I incur over here are because of compulsory accesses, right? Because once a block comes in, it never leaves this infinite cache, right? So once a block is brought in, it's always going to yield cache hits, right? So any misses are caused because this is my very first touch to that block. Okay, so this is how I figure out how many of my misses are because of these compulsory accesses. I can run a simulation with an infinite cache and any misses I have in that simulation are because of compulsory accesses. The next kind of miss is referred to as a capacity miss. So if I have a 64 kilobyte cache, right? Let's say I have a 64 kilobyte cache. So I bring something in and then I touch a whole bunch of other data and then if I revisit that first block before I've touched 64 kilobytes worth of other data, then this, this should result in a cache hit. But if I'm touching a whole bunch of other data before I revisit this block, then there's a good chance that this block has been evicted by other accesses and that's going to cause a miss later, right? So that's a miss because I'm touching a lot of data and the cache is not providing enough capacity to hold on to all of this data. Okay, so the right way to measure the number of capacity misses is to design what is called a fully associative cache. So let me just make a short detour to explain what a fully associative cache is. So until now, we've seen direct map caches. Okay, so if I'm building, let's say, a 64 kilobyte cache with 64 byte blocks, then it means I have 1024 sets and I have one way. The other extreme is to build a fully associative cache that has one set and 1024 ways, right? So both of these caches have exactly the same capacity. They're both comprised of 1024 blocks where each block is 64 bytes in size, but one decides to use a large number of sets and, and a single way, and the other one uses a single set and a large number of ways. And then you have other set associative caches that are somewhere in between. Right, so I can also design a cache that has four ways and 256 sets. Right, So all of these caches have the same capacity, but there are different points in my design spectrum. So this one is called a fully associative cache, and it is designed to minimize the number of misses because of conflicts, Right, because a direct map cache is quite vulnerable to conflict misses because you know two addresses that happen to map to the same set are going to keep evicting each other out. A four-way set associative cache does a better job keeping both of these blocks in cache even though they coincidentally map to the same set. And a fully associative cache does the best job in terms of making sure that different blocks are allowed to coexist in the cache, right? It minimizes the number of conflicts by having the largest number of ways possible. Okay, so if you design a fully associative cache in this case, you know, with 64 kilobytes worth of data, when I touch a block A, and then I touch a whole bunch of other blocks, and then I revisit block A again. If this access turns out to be a cache miss, it's because I touched a whole bunch of other blocks over here, and all of those other blocks are now occupying the different ways in this cache and have evicted A from here. 
right? It's basically telling me that the reuse distance in this case, right? So this is the first touch of A and this is the second touch of A. If the reuse distance is more than 1024, that means that I'm touching 1024 other blocks which are going to evict A from the cache. If that's the case, then this miss is because I'm just not providing enough capacity in my cache. Okay, so the misses I experience with a fully associative cache are referred to as my capacity misses. Now, when I go to my actual cache, if, it, if when I go from this structure to this design over here, a four-way cache, any additional misses I encounter are because of the conflicts introduced by my smaller structure. So I realize this is a complicated topic, so let me do it one more time. And let me do this with a realistic example. Okay, so let's say that my processor has an L1 cache, which is four-way set associative, has a 64 kilobyte capacity, and you're using 64 byte blocks. Okay, so that means you have 256 sets, four ways, right? So this is my actual cache. And when I run my program on this actual cache, I get 100 cache misses. And what I'm trying to do is figure out how many of these misses are because of compulsory misses, how many are because of capacity misses, and how many are because of conflict misses. The way I would do that is I would first run a simulation of my program on an infinitely sized cache. And when I do that, I get, say, 20 misses. So I know that 20 misses can be attributed to compulsory misses. Then I run a simulation with a 64 kilobyte cache, but that is fully associative. And when I do that, I get a total of 80 misses. So out of those 80 misses, I know that 20 of them are because of compulsory accesses, compulsory first touch accesses. So that means an additional 60 misses were created over here. And this is because 64 kilobyte capacity is just not enough to accommodate the entire working set of this application. Okay, and then when I go from the fully associative cache to my actual cache in the processor, I get 100 misses, right? So this tells me that an additional 20 misses were caused because I moved from a fully associative cache to a four-way set associative cache, right? That means there were some blocks that got evicted because you know there were only four different blocks I can accommodate for every single set, right? So maybe there were five different blocks competing for that set, and as a result of that level of conflicts, some blocks got evicted and then resulted in misses later. So an additional 20 misses were created, and those are the misses because of conflicts, right? So this is how I would take an actual processor measurement and then run two more simulations to figure out that 20 misses are because of compulsory misses, 60 are because of capacity misses, and then finally 20 more are because of conflict misses. Okay, so that wraps up my discussion of caches. In the next video, I'll look at how external physical memory is organized, and then we'll discuss the topic of virtual memory.